we now find ourselves in the physical center of Proverbs. According to the measurement, the reckoning of the Masoretes, this is the center of the book. And the verse we find right at the center of the book of Proverbs is verse 17 of Proverbs 16. The highway of the upright turns aside from evil. Whoever guards his way preserves his life. Proverbs has had a lot to say about life and death. It has presented to us only two ways to live. A path of wisdom which leads to life and a path of folly which leads to death. We know that the path of folly often masquerades as wisdom. The wisdom of this world is attractive. It attracts the flesh. But as we've read in verse 25, there is a way that seems right to a man. But its end is the way to death. That's what foolishness does. It kills. Sin kills. From Genesis to Revelation, <clears throat> that is very clear. Sin kills. That's all it has ever done. Sin destroys. Because the father of sin seeks to steal, kill, and destroy. On the other hand, wisdom came to us that we may have life and have it abundantly. John 10.10 10. The wisdom of God is always concerned for our life. God is the giver of life, and so God values life, like we ought to value life. And God's way is always a way of life. So the message for us from this portion of Proverbs 16 is simple. Those who have the wisdom of God have their lives preserved now and forever. We often think of the forever part. I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. I have received Him. So it means that my life is secure so that after I die, I'm going to be secure forever. I'm going to be preserved for eternity. We often forget that eternal life begins the moment you believe in Jesus Christ. And your life, this very moment, is being preserved by God. We've been learning that the Christian is one who daily lives in the presence of God. Remember that term, Koram Deo, face to face with God, the King, the Sovereign, who is also the Heavenly Father to those of us who are in Christ Jesus. Jesus came to give us life and that we would have it to the fullest. And again, we are not just talking about a kind of life that we will have after we die. He's talking about the kind of life that we obtain the moment we receive Him. Remember what we read in John 17? This is eternal life, that they know you, the one true God, and the one whom you have sent. Eternal life is right now. It's communion with God. The moment we repent of our sins and believe in Him, we have this life. It is the life that you now have, fellow believer. Now, this life that you have is not in jeopardy. It is secured by Christ. But, I do want to say this. Your enjoyment of this life can be shaken by sin. And so you need to be reminded, as verse 17 says, that the highway of the upright turns aside from evil. Whoever guards his way preserves his life. <clears throat> That's why we often speak of the third use of the law. When it comes to the commandments of God, for, for all sinners, it is meant to show us our sinfulness. That's, that's the first use. Secondly, it, it also is meant to curb evil in society. It is good that we shall say in society, you shall not murder. But the third use of the law especially belongs to us who have been born again and have been united to the Lord Jesus Christ. That is now the law as a rule of life. That is now the law as God's standard of holiness, which we actually are now given the ability to walk in, to begin pursuing, to begin obeying. The fact that you are here, that you're a person who, let's say, works to provide for yourself, 
you eat. I saw you eat. I'm pretty sure you eat. You participate in society. All of this shows that you think life is important. You may sometimes not like life very much, but you desire to live. The mere fact that you aren't just sitting around, stopping your breath, hoping that you pass out and die every waking moment of your life, and you continue to take breath, sometimes consciously, sometimes not so consciously, and you eat food, and you drink water, and you sleep, and you go to work, and you do all of these things, you know, you might feel that it's routine, and sometimes you don't like life, but somewhere in there is a desire to live. Life is a blessing. And if you value life, here's the first point, you must value wisdom. This is how life flourishes. This is how life is preserved. Self-preservation is regarded by many as a basic instinct in human beings and basically in all. It is to be human to want to keep living. We were made to live. This is true on a physical level. Scientifically, we would say that self-preservation is a universal among all living organisms or else they wouldn't be alive right now. Every living thing, according to science, is said to have a set of behaviors that ensures its survival or else it wouldn't exist right now. So there is this sense of self-preservation. It is good to live. I must live, says living things. And if this is true physically, how much more should we want to live spiritually? How much more should we be saying from our hearts, I must live, I want to keep living, I want to grow <clears throat> in this life. Physical life, spiritual life, the thing is the two are not radically separate. When Adam was cursed with death due to his sin, he died spiritually, he was kicked out of the garden, alienated from the God of life, and he also began to die <clears throat> physically. He began to decay, he began to deteriorate, and all, ultimately he would find himself in the grave. Now, we know that even though we're born sinners, and now have been born again as Christians, and so we are a new creation, you and I, Christians, we will still die physically. But the good news is that when Christ returns, we will be given glorified bodies which will live with Christ forever in the new creation. So, what I'm saying is that physical and spiritual life are intrinsically connected. In the book of Proverbs, speaks of both, the importance of preserving life, physically speaking, and life, spiritually speaking. Both physical and spiritual life are good. Body and soul are made good. We're not ascetics. We're not dualists who believe that only the unseen spiritual realm is good and the body and everything around it is inherently bad. And according to Proverbs, wisdom, you know what it is? One of the things that it is, is that it is a life preserver. Preservation of life is one of the reasons God gave us wisdom. So when you look at the Ten Commandments, for example, one of the commandments is you shall not murder. And if you apply the law properly, you would practice the positive negative rule, which essentially means that if the law forbids murder, the law necessarily implies the preservation of life. It is good to preserve life. It is good to see somebody dying and then try to save their life. Life preservation is inherently good. Therefore, as we read in verse 16, how much better to get wisdom than gold. If wisdom is a life preserver, how much better then to get wisdom than gold? To get understanding, truth is to be chosen rather than silver. Just like um, a proper understanding of the human body, and maybe with the help of some medical procedures, with, with that truth being used properly, someone who is dying could be helped, their life can be preserved, and we would go, praise God, thank God for knowing about the human anatomy and how to heal sickness and how to help a person's body. Similarly, we ought to be speaking of the wisdom of God and saying, 
Praise God for this knowledge. Thank God for laying it out for us so that we might know how to live, how to have spiritual life, and how to preserve this precious life. It is so valuable, wisdom is, because without the wisdom of God, without knowing how to live before Yahweh, we would continue in a life of rot and decay. But thanks to wisdom, again, verse 17, this is what wisdom helps us do. The highway of the upright turns aside from evil. Whoever guards his way preserves his life. So what does preserve mean here? The Hebrew here is often translated to keep. So it can mean to guard, to tend, to watch over, or to preserve. It can carry the idea of retaining something. In other words, wisdom allows us to retain life. It does it in a very counterintuitive way. This is what wisdom says in Matthew 16, 25. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, says Jesus, will find it. This is wisdom. How do we preserve our life? Self-preservation is inherent in all of us. How do we preserve our life? Well, we begin by losing it. How do we live? We begin by dying. Colossians 3.3, 3, For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. So when verse 17 says, Whoever guards his way preserves his life, we can translate this literally as, He who keeps his soul is he who watches his path. Again, by the measurement of the Masoretes, this is the exact center of the book of Proverbs. And I think we see here a pretty good one verse summary of the book of Proverbs. Proverbs, wisdom, is meant for life. Life before God. Living, skillful living before Yahweh. Through wisdom, God wants His people to obtain life and not only obtain it, but keep it. You can say, I, I get the whole conversion thing. You need to turn to the God of life. You need to turn to the life giver, Jesus Christ. And in turning to Him, you die with Him. You rise with Him. And that is how you have eternal life. When you trust in Jesus Christ, it's as if you're crucified with Him. It's as if you're buried with Him. And it's as if you rise again with Him in newness of life. So I get it when it comes to conversion, when I come to Jesus. But how about the keeping my soul? He who keeps his soul is he who watches his path. Now, I'm, I'm sure you're quick to remember that our souls are not in jeopardy. We don't keep our salvation by our own strength and obedience and willpower. It is kept in the hands of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. But there is a sense in which we are being called to keep the faith in the New Testament. And here we are being reminded that we ought to keep our soul and therefore watch our path that we might remain in the path of life and not wander away to the path of death. So here's the second point. If you value wisdom, you will humble yourself. Solomon immediately brings our attention to our need for humility. Verse 18, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. It is better to be of a lowly spirit with the poor than to divide the spoil with the proud. So this is wisdom in action. If we have truly received the wisdom of God and reject the folly of Satan, sin, and death, we will be humbled, just like we see here. We will be saying, Lord, I need your wisdom to live, not my own. When it comes to living the Christian life, we will not seek to come up with our own methods and our own disciplines. We will turn to the wisdom of God found in His Word and we will do as the Lord says. Life-preserving wisdom 
is taking the truths of God and allow them to, to bear upon our life today. Life-preserving wisdom for today, for us, looks something like the, the things that Paul speaks of in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, if you would turn there with me, where he uses the example of Old Testament Israel for Christians to be wise in the way they live today. 1 Corinthians 10. Paul writes, For I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that our fathers were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea and all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink for they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, with most of them, God was not pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness. So he's calling the Christians' attention to their spiritual forefathers, Israel, and how they did not heed God's word, and God was displeased with many of them. And verse 6 says that these things <clears throat> took place as examples for us, that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not be idolaters as some of them were, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did, and 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test as some of them did and were destroyed by serpents, nor grumble as some of them did and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now these things happened to them as an example, but they were written down for our instruction. You see? God's wisdom is meant to protect us. It's meant to help us. It's meant to have us learn so that our lives might be preserved from destruction. So they were written down for our instruction, us today, on whom the end of the ages has come. Therefore, let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. Wisdom is a life preserver. This is wisdom for all of us today. The, the scriptures are wisdom for us today. You've been converted. You now have life. Praise God. But that life does need to be kept and protected and preserved. And we ask, isn't it God who keeps me and preserves me for eternity? Absolutely. He sovereignly preserves us by His grace. But when we are not careful, we still stumble and fall. When we are proud, just as is addressed by Paul, when we are proud, we let our God down and we allow temptations to overcome us. The weakest point of a Christian's life is when he thinks that he's doing great, that he's standing tall, standing firm, that he's got everything figured out, that he is just so sanctified, I would never fall to those past sins anymore. What I'm really saying is, if Christ is the wisdom and power of God to us, every time we remove our gaze from Jesus and become confident in our own, spiritual, in our own strength, we are not diligently caring for our spiritual life. We are not using the means to preserve this life. When we neglect the wisdom of God and trust in ourselves, we are leaving ourselves open to the attacks of the evil one who still continues to try to steal and kill and destroy. So we need to give constant thought to the word. Back to our passage, we read this in verse 20. Whoever gives thought to the word, the, to a matter or to the instruction, will discover good. And blessed is he who trusts in the Lord. Only humbling ourselves under the word of God can grant us discernment and good sense. As we see in verse 21, the wise of heart is called discerning and sweetness of speech increases persuasiveness Good sense is a fountain of life to him who has it, but the instruction of fools is folly. 
So life-preserving wisdom in your day-to-day -day Christian life would be to constantly seek the Lord's instruction, the matters that the Lord has presented, the Lord's wisdom. It is to admit that today, if I trust in my own ways and give no thought to what God requires of me, I will say and do things which are simply not good for my life. You cannot preserve this good life that God has entrusted to you using your own wisdom. Remember back in Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, not some, all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make your paths straight. This is what Jesus Christ did. And in doing this, yes, it first led to His death but then that death led to his resurrection, his conquering the grave, which granted life to us. The same pattern will be seen in our lives, brothers and sisters. Heeding the wisdom of God will often seem counterproductive at first, but ultimately it will lead to a flourishing and abundant life. So recently when Sefi and I and the family were in the Philippines. It's like same old, same old, stuck in traffic for hours, hot and humid, everything's the same, right? And the same stuff happens. I'm driving on the right side of the road, right? Uh, I'm in the second lane, basically impossible to merge into the first lane to get to turning right. The right turn comes up, we're about to reach Michael and Anna's wedding venue. Literally right there. So I'm sort of squeezing in from the second lane, and I turn right, and of course there's a guy in blue, you know, traffic cop, ah, pulls me over, and I'm like, here we go. We get pulled over. We get pulled over for these things. I get it. It's technically, it's wrong. It's wrong because you're in the second lane, but with the situation, you can't even get into the first lane. How are we ever going to get into the first lane with this kind of traffic? We get there, and I'm ready. I'm like, okay, here we go again. You get the license, get the registration and everything. Um, and then, you know, obviously in Filipino, but I'll translate it for you. The guy says, you know, this is going to be 1,500 pesos. And when you renew your license, if you get this ticket, you can't renew it for 10 years anymore. Now you're only going to be able to renew it for five years. And I was like, oh, that, that, that sucks as well. And Steffi's just there, and she's like, oh, yeah, you know, we're really sorry. And, you know, I, I want to be virtuous. And I go, hey, if I did the wrong thing, and you're doing your job, write the ticket, do what you got to do. And, you know, he seemed a little bit discontent with that. And he goes, oh, you know, a lot of, a lot of cops, they just... Um, they just ticket as many as they can because they actually get 10% from it. So, you know, 10% of like, what is it, like 1,500? It's not really that much, 150. I forget what the calculation was. So essentially, as you know, he, as you can maybe tell, he was, he was uh, insinuating we could, just, we could just forget all about this. Just give me some money, all right? It's just basically take a bribe. That's good. And I'll be honest with you, because I really wanted to get to Michael and Ada's wedding, because I was going to preach there, and we were early, and you know, we were so prepared and everything, and now this is taking forever, and this is taking long, and I'm going to have to go to the police station to get, I don't know, I, I wasn't sure what was going to happen, I was, I started to think to myself, I'm like, it's not even that bad, I'll just bribe him, right, I'll just give him the money, it's just so much quicker, so much easier, so I can get rid of this problem, and just go, but I decided to say nothing, and then Steffi comes in, and she just starts smiling and saying, we're really sorry. We had never driven here before, which is true. My husband's about to preach at this wedding. We're just trying to get there, all of these things. And then the guy actually goes like, oh, so you're, sir, you're, you're preaching at the wedding? You're the guy, you know, doing that stuff? And I was like, yeah, yeah. And he's just like, okay, just be careful next time. Just be careful next time. And he just let me go, right? He just let me go. And I was like, that was free. It was Steffi's smile. And all that, it's technically not corrupt. He has, he has the, the legal right to do that. Um, I, I was tempted, but my wife just decided to smile and tell the truth. We're on the way. We haven't driven here before, and uh, he's about to preach, and we're really sorry. Will you forgive us? And what do you know? He just told us to go on and just be careful next time. And I was thinking of that example when I was reading verse 23. The heart of the wise makes his speech judicious. 
um, I should say here, her speech, judicious, and adds persuasiveness to his lips. Gracious words are like a, a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul, and health to the body. Sometimes, and of course, this is just an analogy, but sometimes it is surprising what simple truth accomplishes. It is surprising what simple truth is able to do in your life. Do not underestimate truth. Do not underestimate wisdom. It is a humbling act to be honest and virtuous, like my wife, not me, my wife, even when there are potential consequences that could be avoided just by doing some kind of compromise or choosing to do something that is sinful. But remember verse 25, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is is the way to death. Proverbs seems so harsh there. You might think bribing a cop, doing something that is unethical, it's not really going to lead to death. Uh, but that is veering away from the path of life and once again dabbling in the highway of death. There will be many times that due to our remaining sins, we will choose folly. We will cut corners. We will do the sinful thing to try to avoid inconveniences. And when we do, we will suffer the earthly consequences. But praise be to God for Jesus Christ, who although he never went the way that seems right to a man, willingly went the way to death. From the moment he was born, he knew nothing but absolute righteousness. He grew in wisdom and stature before God and man. He humbled himself before the Father, doing nothing else but his will. Your will, not mine, he says. All the days of his life, he lived according to divine wisdom, wisdom which was given to preserve life now and forever. Yet he went the way of death. He went to the cross. The obedient one gave his life to give us life. And us sinners, therefore, are less like the wise of heart and more like the fools described here in verse 27 onwards, such as a worthless man who plots evil and whose speech is like a scorching fire, or a dishonest man who spreads strife, a whisperer who separates close friends, or a man of violence who entices his neighbor and leads him in a way that is not good. The kind of person who, you know, winks his eyes and plans dishonest things and purses his lips, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> brings evil to pass. I'm, I don't even know how to really do it, but you know what it's saying. These strange descriptions are a better match for us than the ones about being wise and prudent, and when we still do these things, when we recognize our remaining foolishness, what should we do? Saints, you, you've heard this reminder a million times, but saints, do not fall back into a law-based religion. Please remember what it says here in verse 20. Whoever gives thought to the word will discover good. Blessed is he who trusts in the Lord. Go back to the word. What does it say? It says that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. Galatians 3. It says in 1 Peter 2, 24, He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. These are the good words of good news that we need to turn to when we have stumbled into folly. And from here, only from here, can we then be reminded, for this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not burdensome. 1 John 5.3 You know why they're not burdensome for the Christian? It's because the law of God comes to the Christian, not through the hands of Moses saying, do this and live. But the law of God, the statutes of God, comes to the Christian from the hands of Christ. From the hands of the one who has already done this, that you may live. So I want to conclude then by saying, and our last point, if you live according to wisdom, you will turn aside from evil. Oh dear brothers and sisters, love the life, cherish the life, that you have in Christ. It is not just a future life that you look forward to after you die. 
The one with wisdom preserves his life. That is right now. That is today. Tend to this wonderful deposit, this wonderful thing that God has given us. Life. The life that you have in Christ. And even amid sorrows, cherish life. Enjoy the life that you have in Christ. Even through trials, as James 2 says, count it pure joy, my brethren, when you face various trials. Trials of many kinds. For the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And steadfastness, completeness, perfection, that you may be complete, as the word of God says. Tend to this life. Love life. Want to preserve life. Turn away from things which bring death and destruction. These descriptions in Proverbs 16, those ones in verses 27 to 30, and there are many like them in Proverbs, may sound like you at times, but you need to know this. That is no longer your life. This is no longer who you are. You've been washed, sanctified, justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. And so whatever kind of sin you are struggling with right now, whatever foolishness is, is leading to a downcast spiritual life and not tending towards preservation and growth, this is what you need to do. You need to repent. And you need to be reminded that the highway of the upright turns aside from evil and whoever guards his way preserves his life. You need to repent and turn to the wisdom of God, Jesus Christ. You need to believe in what He has done for you. Believe in His success in place of your failure. His wisdom in place of your foolishness. His righteousness in place of your wretchedness. And you will turn aside from death and evil. And you will preserve and cherish this God-given life that you have forever. Let's pray. Oh God, we thank you, giver and preserver of life. We thank you for the means that you have given us so that our life would be protected and preserved and that we might enjoy it and cherish it and flourish in it. We thank you for the means of grace because definitely these are central to preserving this life that we have in Christ this very moment. We ask that you would use the preaching of the word to that end and the sacrament of the Lord's Supper for that end as well. We pray, Lord, that we would be a people who love life because God, our God, is life and we have become sharers in the life of God through Jesus Christ. So, Lord, if there is anything in us that is causing us not to, to truly love and, and cherish the life that we have been given, O oh God, grant us repentance. O oh God, who are we that we would be discontent with the life that you have given us? O oh Lord, turn us away from such foolishness. Lord, show us how good life in Christ really is. So good that it never has to end. Eternal life. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.